Hey, how you doing? It's Steve. In this video, we're going to make a quick mix with a track at 117 BPM breaks. I'm going to show you how I organize the sounds in a way that makes it really, really easy to get good sound quickly without driving yourself crazy. This is something you can do in your own project. So I'm going to show you what sounds are in there, how they're grouped, how their levels are set, and if we have time, a little bit about the effects. Here is the track. And what you're hearing now is just the bass group. Watch these tracks 30, 31, 32, and 33. And the effects. I set up keyboard keys first. All my effects, I map on the key Z. See that little Z right there? So I can easily turn off my effects when I want to get them out of the way. And then I map some other keyboard keys on my computer keyboard so I can easily turn the groups of sounds on and off. Super handy for your workflow so you can hear what you want, when you want to hear it, and get everything else out of the way. I got one bus that's like a container. A bus is a stereo sub mix. One container with all my drums, so I can make a stereo drum mix when I want to. One container with all my instruments. Again, stereo mix. All the pads, leads, melodies, whatever, everything except the bass line is coming into the subs. And then of course, if you have vocals in the track, put them in another group so you can keep them in one place and emotionally have them connect with the rest of the sound. So altogether, my whole mix is coming down to four tracks. That makes it really easy to mix. You're only doing a four channel mix. And as long as each one of those channels sounds good, the whole mix is gonna sound good. We'll talk about what's on the master in a second. So how did I make these containers? Well, these are all basically audio tracks, okay? So you make a new audio track and set the audio to no input, monitor switch to in, and then you go and route some sounds to get there. So here's my subgroup. Notice that the bus container is dark blue. Subs, same color. I use color coding to just organize the sounds coming in. Now I have all my baseline sounds coming into this one stereo group on track one. Uh, that's like giving me several places to do EQ and compression so I can have processing. Like why did I put these in a group and route it to a bus? Well, sometimes you want a group of sounds to have their own processing and then you're combining groups of groups. So maybe that might make more sense with the drums. Right now we are listening to the drum bus. Again, that's a new audio track. Set it to no input. Click the monitor switch on in. And when we look at all these green ones, each one of these is like its own little mix, okay? My claps, this is a drum rack. I wanna have all my drum racks going into the drum bus, and I want my drum racks to all have like their own kind of EQ and compression or flavor. Like 12, right? That's the main like boom bap kind of beat. So bus groups allow me to take all these and put them into one place, as well as sending return effects in, right? Now you could do this with just normal track groups, but I like buses for a couple more reasons too, and also they're uh, super easy and fun when you get into a higher track count with a lot bigger session, like 70, 80 tracks. It helps to have um, just a really simple container at the end. So I go through these and I set up a stereo submix where I can hear every sound. There's a nice wide stereo field and the frequency range is balanced for that submix. Those are the rules for submixes that I follow. Take any stereo pair of sounds, instruments, drums, vocals, get all that same kind of sound in one place, and then ask the question, can I hear everything going in? We are listening to the instrument bus right now. These purple colored ones are coming in, and I'm asking the question, can I hear every one of these sounds? Is there a stereo field spread wide apart? Is the frequency range basically balanced, like with no big spikes or any out of, out of, kind of, out of control levels? <laughs> and if those three things are happening, then all your stereo groups are gonna sound good when you bring them in together. Even the subs are, there's some stereo mid-range bass in there as well as some mono sub bass in there. And then you bring them all together, add your effects back in. And that's how I set up my routing to have a really simple control of all the sounds in the mix. If I wanna work on my drum mix, I can easily take the whole thing and bring it up or down. You know when you're making a mix and your snare drum's not loud enough, it can be really hard to just get your drums to sound natural and correct each little piece? Well, if I'm trying to go over here and mix every single one of these drums up and down a little tiny bit to make them fit with everything else, trust me, you can go around in circles endlessly and never get it right. But if you have all your drums in a stereo pair, then when you hear one sound that's too loud, you can be like, wait, everybody else be quiet, cut the instruments, cut everything else, I only want to hear the drums. 
I can do that super fast with these little controls. I don't have to go and solo all these different drum channels one by one or hit the mute switch on all the other instruments one by one. That takes forever and it's a waste of time. So I like to be able to quickly grab the sounds I want and then maybe if I think my cymbals need to be a little louder, I can go right to that track, notice they're labeled, and bring them in. And I even have keyboard key commands to like unmute it quickly so I can catch the drop or catch the beat, you know, the downbeat and feel it. So it makes it so much easier to be able to set your levels and get a great sounding mix. On the topic of levels, what do I do first? I solo my biggest kick drum sound and I make sure I got headroom on the master. That one low beat bumping us up to about minus 14, minus 15. All my drums together, like minus 15 dB, that's tons of space. Now we're going to add the subs because sub frequencies, low frequencies take up more space in the mix. So get your low end working first. Put up your kick drum by itself, add your subs, and you know what you do? Turn it up in the room. If it's not loud enough for you when it's hitting like, you know, minus eight, minus nine, don't try to raise the levels of the channels in your mix. That's not where loudness comes from. Loudness comes from big amps pushing air in the room. Okay, so when you have your kick drum soloed, don't worry about how loud it is inside of Ableton. Think about what you're hearing in the room and does it feel right as a tone. So you mix your kick drum and your sub bass as just pure sounds, not worrying about what the overall level is because we can raise that later in mastering. And if your sound is not loud enough for you, turn up your monitors a little bit to make it sound right in the room. Obviously, be careful with your ears and don't monitor at loud levels for a long time, but use your monitor volume actively to change the level of what you're listening to in the room often while you're mixing, periodically, all the time. Then, the other cool thing about working with buses is it's really easy to just have fun mixing like a little kid, like, oh, I want this a little louder. Stick it up a little bit louder. It's so easy to take big chunks of the mix and get them in the right place. Just like if it was a band with like drummer, bass player, guitarist, and singer on four tracks and you're doing a four track mix, it's really easy to mix because it's simple. You just hear what you want, put it up or down or whatever. Uh, there's a lot more we could go into with the specific effects on each track. Uh, it always comes down to listening to the sound, making decisions about dynamics and frequency range, tone, feel, and then the sound design of whatever the actual instrument is. The main thing I can recommend is tweak your sounds over time and put in some automation so you have fun doing your track and your track feels like it's alive. I could space out listen to that sound. <laughs> And when you get your master mix made, you should have around six dB of headroom on the master channel, which will give you tons of space to get it mastered later. Now with digital music, of course, you could go up to like minus 0 0.03 and it would be fine. It doesn't have to be minus six. But as a rough guideline, this will give you room to push up your other sounds a little more if you want a little bit more or something. If you end up, if you aim for having a few, if you aim to have a few dB of headroom on the master channel, as a starting place, you'll always have room to push up the bass a little bit more and get the low end feeling right. So that is my quick layout for how I do mixes. Yes, I have effects units and effects racks on the channels, um, on, the, on the buses I mean, and as well on individual tracks. Uh, let me make a little quick promo recommendation. The universal channel strip that I have right here is something I use in every track. It's got the basics of utility, high pass filter, gate, compressor, EQ, limiter, and they're racked up so I can grab the, grab the device I want, and easily dial it in. And then if I don't want that sound, I have an easy bypass to just turn it off. So I'll put a link in the video description where you can get this Ableton rack for free to play with and use on your tracks. Then uh, I have another EQ doing some automation for creative tune shaping in the mix. And the other thing I wanna point out is if you like the way I'm teaching about mixing and you wanna learn how to make great sounding mixes that are easy to work with, let me point you to Make Space for Bass, which is my hands-on Ableton mix course. You actually download Ableton projects and do a tutorial inside live to make a mix. You learn by doing it, you learn problem solving, you learn how to identify things that need to change, and then put your tracks together with submixes and bus groups and effects and routing to get a really awesome sounding stereo mix specifically for electronic music. And you could learn this, it's not that hard. It takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of, you know, um, audio engineering measurement to figure out your gain staging and get your sounds in the right place. And once you do that, it's super fun. I think you'll like it a lot. So I will put the link to Make Space for Bass in the video also. And that's gonna be the end of this one. Let's just bring these sounds back in and undo the loop. 
Thanks for watching. I'm Steve Knotts. Hit that button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, drop a comment if you have any questions, and I will see you in our Discord server later on. All right? Thanks, y'all. Bye-bye.